spinning disc. It sure knows how to fill a room. Monolithic, power hungry, complex, prone to faults. Data storage is a nexus of tech debt. You are tasked to do more with less. It's time to leave disk in the dust. The future is flash. Unified, automated, and energy efficient. More storage in a smaller footprint. With solutions that transform how you protect, deploy, and consume your data. It's time to change how you think about storage. To consider your own outcomes as well as your data center. It's time to level up. Welcome to Accelerate 2023. And now, please welcome Chief Marketing Officer, Matt Burr. How we doing? Everybody doing okay? Doing all right? Standing room only in the back. It's like smoke filled from up here. I can't see all of you. Um, welcome uh, to Accelerate 2023. Super excited uh, to have everybody here for the next uh, couple of days. We have a lot of great stuff in store. Um, I know everybody's waiting for Shaq. Shaq will be here today. I'm not Shaq, uh, but Shaq will be here. Um, I do take a little bit of issue, however, with that video. Uh, I love our production crew. Production crew, you're awesome. Uh, team that put that video together, you're awesome. But I would argue that the future isn't flash, the flash is now. I was talking to an analyst that I respect yesterday and he reminded me of something very, very important. And I took a couple notes last night and I wanted to share them with you. Greater simplicity, portfolio breadth that spans all workloads, tied together via pure one in a common operating environment and purity, all of that just adds up to a better experience. He said, it's a better experience. You should be talking about that. And we've done that for 12 and a half or 13 years now with Flash. And so we appreciate that you're here to spend time to get up to speed on what's coming next. But also please spend some time, if you're not familiar with Pure, trying to figure out our, our ethos because we are a very customer first organization as can be represented by our net promoter score. And so, yes, please take the classes. Yes, please go to the sessions, find people from Pure to talk to, see their passion, understand how committed they are uh, to, to just bringing a great experience to, to all of you. We're passionate about it, find our ethos. Okay, today you're gonna hear uh, from, from Charlie and Sean, if I can steal just a bit of their thunder. Uh, you know, decade number two for Pure uh, and Pure Loan is already ushering in an era of efficiency uh, with a storage medium that is undeniably better than disk. Can you read it? Where's my camera? Where's my camera? Yeah, for those of you that know me pretty well, yeah, I put on a few pounds, I got it. Nobody wants to see this, nobody wants to see this view for too long, I understand. But look at that, huh? oops, sorry, I keep moving around. Where's my guy? Right there, boom. Got 99 problems, but a disc ain't one. I promise you there's somebody in this room that's been a customer for long enough that when they open their first box, if they were lucky, they got the 99 problems t-shirt. It wasn't this one, it was black. Legal stepped in. Legal said, we can't send that anymore. It's too something. I don't know what it was, but it was too something. But I got this shirt from Legal. She got it for me, our chief legal officer. So I think it's okay to, I think it's okay to do that, uh, to have this up here. And I don't see any reason for there to be disks anymore. We're gonna hear about the, the E family. We're gonna hear about Flash Ray E. Sean's gonna talk about that. We now have, a, we now have a, a, a suite in our portfolio that allows us to take every workload, including those that have traditionally been the home of disk. So, I don't want to spend too much time talking about what everybody else is going to talk, what everyone else is going to be talking about, uh, because Accelerate is ultimately about you. We do our absolute best to make this about all of you, not about us. There are things that we have to talk about, but we try to focus on outcomes as much as we possibly can, tangible outcomes. You'll hear from a customer shortly what his tangible outcomes were. We want you to be able to level up. 
So level up looks like, this looks like I'm a, I'm a child, I'm a product of the 80s, I'm 50. And I, I see this like in the arcade when I was popping quarters in the machine, like level up, level up. I don't want, it's probably not a video game, but leveling up is thinking different about how we apply technology to different workloads that we might not historically have thought we could replace with Flash. For those of you that have seen me or heard me, I keep saying the same thing, replacing refrigerators with something that's the size of a microwave that draws far less power. Not that difficult of a concept. And we have almost 100 sessions and over 1,000 people attending training courses. I wanna shout out our certifications team because the certifications team had to really ramp up when they saw what your demand was for these certifications, which I'm tremendously proud of. I'm employee number 11 here. I take a lot of pride in the fact that you are all here because you have some degree of interest or passion in what we've built. And the notion that we could get to a place where people wanted to be certified on our products, I'm tremendously proud of, tremendously proud of. So thank you. The leveling up is about the outcome. Maybe it's a big NASA telescope that's taking pictures of galaxies. Maybe UFOs, I don't know, that stuff's crazy. Everybody sees that in the news, right? Like, like I, I don't even know what to believe. I have a friend who sends me like every UFO article and I'm like, if we had this NASA telescope, don't you think they would have seen it? You'd think they would have seen it, I don't know. Uh, organizations finding cures for disease, diseases deep in data, or it can be small. And I don't know that I would consider this one to be small. Maybe the way I think about it in my mind is just I think about it as small, but the reality is, is if we have people on our teams and we can give them their nights and weekends back, how awesome would that be? That is a really, really big moment. Look, it can also be removing racks from data centers to reduce power, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we can look at in terms of operational efficiencies that you'll hear, that you'll hear throughout the day. So, you know, throughout the next two days, you'll also hear us give out several breakthrough awards. So breakthrough awards are about recognizing customers who demonstrate excellence, creativity, uh, a commitment to um, sustainability, um, and kind of, kind of changing the world with data. Right? It's, you know, we've all kind of been in this industry for a long time. We do change the world with data. I think it's okay to make that statement. I think it's okay to be, to be proud of it. So without further ado, I have the pride of being able to announce the first Breakthrough Award winner. Let's take a look. WiseTech Global helps more than 18,000 customers get goods from point A to point B all around the world. Its logistics platform delivers real-time insights so they can make informed decisions about customs and compliance, about international e-commerce, about rates and contracts, and so much more. The seamless flow of goods depends on the seamless flow of data. Pure storage powers this data, making it available whenever it's needed, wherever it's needed, in the air or on the ocean, on the road or on the rails, from origin to destination. With intelligent data and visibility across the global supply chain, WiseTech is helping its customers embrace a digital logistics strategy that quite literally moves the world. A change-making mission worthy of a Changemaker Award. Congratulations to WiseTech Global for changing the world of logistics, one delivery at a time. Awesome. Congratulations to WiseTech Global. All right, so. Look forward and level up to the power of simplicity, but don't discount simple as unsophisticated, right? It takes a lot of effort to make things that were previously compact, complex tasks simple. So simplicity ultimately is sophistication in its purest form and you should demand it. I still hold everybody accountable to being able to deliver as many possible commands as you need to run the way on a a run and array on the note card. Remember that? Remember the little business card, tent? It's all you needed? That's not just a tent. It's not just a card. It's something that means something in the company. That's a reminder of how much we need to continue focusing on simplicity. All right, look, we've been working, to this, we've been working forward to this day uh, for about 13 years. This Accelerate, you know, right here and now, you'll see, you know, kind of how we've made our vision uh, a reality. Um, and that vision, is an all-flash world. 
but it's what our entire portfolio delivers that truly matters. You'll hear from Charlie, uh, Charlie Giancarlo, our CEO, uh, who will talk about the all-flash evolution and what it means to you. Uh, I'll steal just a tad of his thunder. Two to five times more power and space efficient uh, compared to all-flash, and 10 times more efficient than disk. 10 times. At least 50% lower TCO, total cost of ownership, compared to competitive offerings of both flash and hard disk. We have a material advantage. I don't want to sound braggadocious, but I do want to sound full of pride. We do have a, a material advantage. We are positioned where we are in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for a reason. You'll also hear from Sean Hansen. He's the general manager of the Flash Array business unit, and he'll take you on a journey that begins and ends with pure storage customer experiences. And then we'll change the game a little bit. I'll come back out, we'll have a little fun with Shaq. So we want to help make your vision a reality, get ready to level up. And if you don't know this already, disk is done, and you don't need it now. Couple last few reminders. Uh, to learn more about today's sessions, join the Pure Storage Roadmap, uh, where we are and, and where we're going today at 1 p.m. Uh, I want to thank uh, kind of all of our sponsors who have made this event possible. Uh, enjoy your Accelerate experience. Thanks for coming. We are amazingly appreciative of you being here. Please find people. Please ask questions. Please discover what we're about. Find me. I'm happy to talk to anybody about what we're doing here. And please give me, uh, please help me give a warm welcome to our CEO, Charlie Giancarlo. <laughs>so great to see you all here. Fantastic to see people standing up in the back uh, with no seats available in the middle. Uh, really, you do us a, a great honor uh, coming as uh, far as you have, spending uh, you know, your valuable time with us. Uh, I know that there, um, I've met people that have traveled halfway around the world to be with us here today. Uh, that's just amazing. And I want to just thank you so much for spending your time with us. I, I want to start with a story. Um, as it turns out, it's a true story, and it's way back in time, uh, 1984. Um, actually, not that far back in time, uh, but uh, you know, maybe, and even there were color, color photos. But this was my last semester in business school, and a friend of mine decided to do an independent study. And believe it or not, that independent study was studying a new data recording technique called optical recording. And we analyzed it as thinking, OK, is this going to replace magnetic recording? And we analyzed the, the curve, if you will, the price decline curve, the improvement curve of optical. And we measured the improvement curve of magnetic disk storage. And what we determined was that magnetic disk storage was going to continue to improve at an exponential rate for decades to come and that optical recording would not be able to catch up. Now, my friend continued to, to study this, uh, even after uh, graduate school. And later that year, that same year, 1984, he and his new wife got together with myself and my new wife for dinner. And he started to explain how, in fact, opti op uh, optical recording in the form of CDs was going to replace LPs, okay, vinyl records. And my wife was absolutely incredulous. She said, there is no way that these little c CDs are going to replace LPs. What are people going to do with the artwork? They love their artwork. They love having the words on the LPs. Well, I think we all know what happened with that story. That was 1984 when CDs were first introduced. And within six years, by the end of that decade, CDs just uh, took over that entire market, right? LPs were almost entirely gone. You know, this was repeated about 15 years later with another favorite digital recording technique, okay? And that was in the video realm, right? VHS. VHS, which everybody purchased or, or rented to be able to watch a movie at home. We all loved our VHS recorders, right? Well, DVDs came out. And it only took five or six years for DVDs to completely take over the market 
from VHS. Now, what was interesting here is it wasn't just the recording media that changed, but it changed the fate of companies. If we look at block, the major distribution for VHS and for DVDs, it was Blockbuster when, when DVDs started to take off. So we look at 2006, and within five years, Netflix that was sending out DVDs versus Blockbuster that started out in VHS completely changed in terms of share. And in fact, five years later, if you look at uh, you know, 2011, 12, what happened to that light blue color? Well, Blockbuster went bankrupt. And what about Netflix? Well, today, it's over $30 billion in sales, and by the way, over $300 billion in market cap. So when media changes, it can change the fate of companies. So what does all this have to do with hard disk? Well, let's take a look at hard disk over the last decade or so. Um, relative to flash, now hard disk used to be in everything we did. Remember when hard disk was in an iPod? It's no longer in an iPod, is it? It's no longer in your laptop. And if you, if you still have a desktop, it's no longer in your desktop. In fact, hard disk is still only in two places. Enterprise, mass storage, and hyperscalers. It's the two last remaining bastions of hard disk. And as you see, NAND has continued to climb. It's in everything now, except those two areas. And this is why we are so confident that in five years' time, by 2028, there will be no new hard disks sold. So the question is, are we going to get in front of that? Or, are we going to still, or is the industry, uh, are individual companies in the industry going to fall behind? So now let's take a look at Pure. Pure was started on the basis of flash replacing hard disk. And of course, we're not quite there yet in terms of replacing it all. But over that period of time, we have grown faster than the market every single year. And in fact, this is uh, pure versus the entire uh, enterprise storage market, not just the all-flash market. So we've gone from zero to eight-point share of the entire uh, mass storage market, and all of our competitors have declined. And the real thing that we should be asking about this slide is why. Why can an upstart company that, you know, had the smallest of the sales forces uh, that, um, you know, it didn't have when we first got started all the features and functionality that all of the big players had, why were we able year after year to gain more market share? Well, it starts off with the fact that we deliver outcomes with our products. And what do we mean by that? Well, Matt went over some of this. But compared to our all-flash competitors, we are two to five times more power and space efficient, and 10 times when you compare to hard disk systems that we replace. Most importantly, we are more than 10 times more reliable, and that's not even considering the non-disruptive upgrades that we put in place. Because when our competitors do upgrades, they have what's called scheduled downtime, which they don't count in their reliability numbers. We, are, we require, according to our customers, many of them in this room, you report that you're able to manage the same amount of data with five to 10 times less labor. I mean, that's amazing, right? I mean, who wouldn't want to put less labor into mundane tasks having to do with their data storage? You want to focus on more useful tasks. And you add those three things together, and that puts us about 50% lower total cost of ownership, including the original purchase price of the equipment. Another thing is we have the world's most consistent product line. What do I mean by that? Most of our competitors have assembled their storage estate, and they cover you know, the entire environment that most customers need. But they assembled that product line by acquisition. They have different operating systems. They have different management systems. They have uh, hardware that, doesn't, uh, that can't be interchanged among the different systems. We, and I'll go into this, have the world's most consistent product line. And then finally, we're the only uh, company, frankly, in the systems business 
that can sell a product and tell our customers the product will never go obsolete. It will never cause a disruption in your environment due to an upgrade. That we can keep your products new all the time. We recently uh, did yet another upgrade for a customer that first purchased our product 10 years ago. That product that they bought then without additional capital investment, so based on just the subscription, now looks like in their environment the product that we sold last week because basically we did sell it last week. Uh, we did make it last week. I mean, that's pretty amazing. It's like driving a, your five-year-old car to work and when you step out of the car after arriving at work, you notice it's a brand new car. I mean, that just doesn't happen in the system business. So these are the outcomes we deliver. Now, someone who doesn't know us might ask, well, how do you do this? How is it possible that you do this and nobody else does? So that's where we get into things that really make us quite unique. <clears throat> we have the most modern product line, and the reason for it is starts and ends with our operating system, Purity. Purity, which operates on all of our products and supports block, file, and object, and is the only storage operating system that manages Flash directly. It does not need to have an intermediate layer called SSDs. SSDs are designed to mimic a hard disk. Why would you take a semiconductor and mimic a hard disk? That's like making a, a laptop computer mimic a typewriter. It's so much more powerful than what a mechanical device can do. We don't need that. We're able to manage Flash across the entire array or set of arrays more efficiently than companies that use their hard disk software to manage SSDs. This software, these uh, uh, direct flash modules, operate on just two hardware architectures, scale up and scale out. Scale up so that we can scale up and down in terms of, of overall price performance, provide very low latency. Scale out in terms of very large sizes very high performance across parallel workloads. DFMs and Purity operate on all of these different systems. Everything from the most performant to the most price competitive. And this operating system also operates on the cloud, today on AWS and Azure. So a very flexible, very consistent operating system. And all of these systems are managed by one management system, Pure One where you can find all of the information necessary to manage and operate your data environment. Now, these are all for traditional workloads, but wait, we have port works that can help you to then migrate and move to next generation cloud native workloads on Kubernetes and containers. Operating both on our products as well as on the cloud. And then finally, all of these things together operating with our evergreen capabilities. That is always modern, always new, always non-disruptive upgrades. And we're also the only company that really promises a cloud operating model, both in the sense of allowing you to manage your data, not array by array, but really as a fleet, as a pool of storage, and offer that as a service to your customers, your developers, and to be able to do that, again, across clouds. So both on-prem and in the cloud. So as you can see, very modern, very consolidated, very consistent. You don't have to deal with multiple operating systems, with different APIs, with different management systems. You can now manage all of your environment in a simple, consolidated in, uh, uh, set of solutions that are simple to operate, non-disruptive, uh, and allow you, uh, re allow you to be able to operate the system with less training and less labor overall. All right, so what's, let's pull this together in terms of what are the four things that really distinguish pure storage. The first is we are the only vendor in, in the enterprise storage environment, and frankly, the only one anywhere that has direct uh, to flash management with our software. It's taken us 10 years to develop this software, 10 years. It's gonna take anybody else who attempts to do this many years to be able to get to the point where we are 
And it's what gives us our efficiency, our effectiveness. It's also what gives us the longevity of our systems. As you know, we guarantee our flash for life. And the reason is because by the, by the time, <laughs> it'll last for easily 10 years or more, and by that time, you will probably have moved on to larger and larger systems. We have, as I mentioned, the world's most consistent portfolio, which saves you time, energy, uh, uh, saves you from having to keep spares on all different types of systems, makes it easier to operate. Three is we have the cloud operating model, where we will work with you so that you can manage your data storage environment across clouds like a pool of storage, to manage it in a fully orchestrated fashion, to make it easier and more consistent for you to be able to manage all of your data, not array by array, but as a pool of storage. And then finally, our unique evergreen uh, life cycle. Again, this is something that has to be engineered right at the beginning of your core software development, engineered at the core of our purity system. You can't re-engineer it into systems that are already in place. These are four unique attributes that I really doubt competitors will be able to mimic in any shape or form in the, in the years to come. Okay, so um, moving on, um, that consistent set of products, all with one operating system, all on DFMs, can support everything from the most high performance application environments, such as mach machine learning, uh, such as uh, artificial intelligence, and we have the chops to prove it. These are just a few of the customers that have ordered over the last year, but we have well over 100 AI customers. And this product line that we've shown you can operate at those high performance levels, including Meta, which has built with our product, both FlashBlade and Flash Array, the largest AI supercomputer in the world. Pretty impressive, right? But now this exact same set of products will now be able to operate at the most price sensitive areas. And this is something that Matt gave you a hint on, something we spoke about at our last uh, earnings call. We have now pierced the 7,200 RPM disk drive systems market with pricing at 20 cents per gigabyte, which we can do right now. Uh, we can get that 15 to 20 cent per gigabyte pricing with uh, Flash Blade that we had, had announced last quarter and now Flash Array E as well. And this is just the beginning. By next year, we'll be able to go down yet again into that next layer of, uh, of mass storage. And the year after that, 2025, into the next layer and even pierce into the price performance that hyperscalers get with their disk estate. Again, this is why we know that disk is, is at the end of its days. There's just, when you can provide at the same initial price point, a product that requires less than five, if not 10x, the amount of space and power, not to mention less labor, less replacement of disk, then how's it gonna be possible for the former uh, data standard to continue, right? There's going to be no place left for disk to be able to operate. It's a huge market, you know, we're talking about tens of billions of dollars and the time is now to go after it. Uh, for the partners in the room, we're gonna work with you to make this viable at, uh, you know, in all of these different environments, for the customers in this room. We're going to be very, very aggressive uh, in enabling you to take out the disks in your environment. Uh, so work with us, work with our team. We're really looking forward to really plowing ahead, being the, the sharp tip of, of the spear in this market to go after just to make your life easier, to let your teams, as uh, Matt mentioned, go home on nights and weekends, not have to worry about their disk estate. So, you know, there's, um, if you will, today there's really no reason to not use uh, Flash and no reason not to use Pure. We provide a cost-effective solution now for all of your storage needs. And, you know, we can time it as we go forward over the next couple of years, but, you know, layer by layer, we can help you to finally make disk a thing of the past. And there's a side benefit to this, after all. It is greener. You know, one-fifth to one-tenth the power, one-fifth to one-tenth the space and cooling. 
you know, this is not even assuming any advantage in data reduction. That's uh, on top of this. You know, our comparisons on this pricing are based on raw to raw. So th your results could vary, but it only vary up, only be better. We are less than one-tenth the space and power, as we mentioned, but also less than one-fifth the e-waste. First of all, it doesn't fail as often. It lasts longer. And even if it didn't, the amount of waste on flash is far less than on hard disk. So you can improve your um, ESG scores as well. And by the way, the other benefit you get, more than 10 times the reliability. I mean, who doesn't want that, right? So um, I have to say that this is a big deal, not just for each of you individually, but data centers take up about 1% to 2% of total energy usage in the world. That's an incredible figure, isn't it? 1% to 2% of all energy in the world. If data takes up about 20 to 25% of the power in an average data center, which is, in fact, the case, and if we take the lower figure that going to flash, going to pure flash, is one-fifth the power of the hard disks that it replaced, one-fifth to one-tenth. That means that we will save roughly 20% of all data center power, right? Take your entire data center power, you save 20%. Imagine that. I mean, that is a lot of the world's power that gets saved by one simple action. And I don't think there's anything else that you can do in your data center that'll save any one thing you can do in your data center that'll save 20% of total power. So pretty amazing. So if we put all these things together, you know, similar cost, but lower TCO, um, lower power, lower space, better performance, better um, total cost of, of ownership uh, overall, more reliable, a green environment, more consistent product, why wouldn't you standardize on pure? Tell me why. What are the reasons? I can't imagine. So we're looking forward to you to make pure your standard. I want to thank you for your time today. You're going to hear a lot more from our team. But now I'd like to um, introduce our next Breakthrough Award winner. So enjoy. Protecting Americans from health threats. That's the goal of the Centers for Disease Control. Whether it's making food safer, identifying emerging pathogens, or improving vaccines, the CDC relies on technology to fuel complex research. More than 100 pure storage flash blade underpin a state-of-the-art health detection and surveillance system that uses powerful technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning to drive critical data analyses for hundreds of researchers. Sequencing workloads that once took days, now take minutes. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, the CDC's Office of Advanced Molecular Detection found itself in a race against time. Using FlashBlade, researchers sequenced genetic samples from state partners and private labs quickly and at scale. Since then, the CDC has processed more than 2 million samples, generating insights that help save lives. All in a simpler, more sustainable storage environment. For delivering breakthrough research, we congratulate the CDC on winning this year's Greatest of All Time Award, and we thank them for their service. Congratulations, Team CDC. Really well done. And of course, uh, you know, all of us are, are really thankful for all the great work that the CDC does. So it's now my great pleasure uh, to uh, introduce uh, Sean Hansen, our general manager of our Flash Array business unit. Sean? Break away. Good morning and welcome. We are so grateful to have you here with us today. We have met some amazing people already, and I wanted to say and express our deep gratitude that you've chosen to come all this way. On the way here, I met two what felt like twins from Sweden, and they shared with me their story about how they are uh, building a, a company they intend to reinvent the entire space of the data storage market. 
They started six months ago. They flew all the way out from Sweden, and I just felt so grateful that they would take that bet together with us. Yesterday, when I was on the elevator, I met a different gentleman, an amazing leader from a fine East Coast University in the United States. And he said he was not a member of our community. He was here because he had heard about what had happened over the years, and he wanted to understand what it was all about. Well, I hope that he can see in you what we see in you. We see the finest minds, the greatest data scientists, some of the very best in this industry, true pioneers. So if you see him, and he works for a university with the, that begins with the first letter N, please wrap your arms around him and give him a warm embrace from the pure community. Welcome, we hope you have a wonderful experience. We have some amazing news for you today, some exciting news, but I wanted to first pay tribute to your journey as pioneers and as innovators. Let me start by sharing a similar story about a different innovator who reinvented and dramatically changed a different industry. For many years, British cycling developed a terrible reputation. In 100 years of Olympics, their teams rarely placed. They seemed to try everything, but nothing worked. However, in 2003, a new coach, Sir Dave Brailsford, joined the British cycling team. He was different from previous coaches that tried to completely overhaul their teams. He de developed a strategy that he called the aggregation of marginal gains. This is the principle that small gains compound very quickly over time. For example, if you just improve 1% every day, that would result in a 37x improvement in one year. They improved everything, from wind drag to maintenance routines to crash risk. And these compounded quickly into incredible results. The team went on to dominate and sweep in the last four Olympics. There is a parallel here to what you have done. When you are the world's most efficient at what you do, you win. So let me start with three pioneers who won in efficiency, three of the early adopters of pure storage, the city of Davenport in Iowa, Sierra Nevada, and Nielsen IQ. In 2014, they adopted the first flash array, M, the first flash array 400s with 18 terabytes of flash storage. What they pioneered was the Sir Brailsford of data storage. Of course, I am referring to what Charlie talked about, non-disruptive upgrades, or what we called evergreen. Like the cycling team cutting wind drag, let's talk about the compounding effect of not having dreaded data, data migrations. In 2014, customers needed giant arrays stretching across multiple racks for the kinds of problems they solved with those early flash arrays. These mega arrays shrank from 77 rack units on average to 12 with the introduction of flash array. And now that same flash array from 2014 has more than 10 to 20 times its original storage capacity in just three rack units, three. What's interesting is that even though these arrays have served business critical workloads for over nine years, they look nothing like they did originally. Everything has changed. New drives, power supplies, chassis, controllers, all without disruption or downtime. It simply keeps getting better. These three pioneers began adding improvements that imp compounded rapidly. Direct flash modules, 10x volume and snapshot scale, best in class of evolves, NVMe, always on QoS, Mobility between on-prem and the cloud, cloud block store, QLC, continuous replication, self-service upgrades, the ability to move workloads transparently. The list goes on and on. The area under this curve is amazing. Now the entire fleet of pure arrays has evolved from five nines of uptime to almost seven nines. It's important to note that seven nines, or even five, is impossible for other companies that caveat their SLAs with scheduled maintenance downtime. We call that a fake SLA. This year, your top racing team gets even better at improving the maintenance experience. First, self-service upgrades automate security fixes and increase how fast you can, you can deploy value on your timing. Second, we brought simplicity in the evergreen model to traditional NAS services with the introduction of the industry's first truly unified block and file platform. It simply keeps getting better. And so now we're pleased to introduce your racing team to new ways to mitigate crash risk. 
Flash Array safe mode snapshots have been extended to new volumes in all arrays with self-service to keep it simple. The new Evergreen One ransomware recovery SLA guarantees you can recover after an attack to a clean environment after arrays are locked down for forensics. New AI-driven anomaly detection alerts you to suspicious activity. By adding an SLA for data protection, Evergreen One continues to lead as the industry pioneer in data storage subscriptions. It simply keeps getting better. So in the spirit of getting better, I am proud to announce the biggest performance and efficiency gains in Flash Array history. Meet Flash Array XR4 and Flash Array CR4, our next generation Flash Array platforms. I'm so excited by this. 40 to 60% greater performance, high-end scale built for three petabytes of raw storage, 35% more data compression with direct compress technology. These are all things that have come from the high-end Excel line 18 months ago and now have been pushed down to our full portfolio and new C models to expand the product line. The new generation has 30 to 40% greater performance per watt. It consumes 85% less energy than other all-flash alternatives and powerfully, it requires 95% less space than hybrid disk arrays. Charlie talked a little bit about direct flash. This is rapidly diverging from hard drives and off-the-shelf SSDs. You can expect this density to dwarf the alternatives. Imagine what a 300 terabyte DFM means for a spinning disk industry that will max out at 40. Today, we are excited to show you the latest and largest in flash module technology. I love the orange of the heatsink. I have in my hands a 75 terabyte DFM. This is amazing. With onboard NVRAM and PCIe Gen 4 bus speeds, this creates the most dense power effective footprint on the planet. The pace of innovation just keeps getting better. As Charlie said, this is rooted in the simplicity of purity a unified platform across Flash Array, Flash Blade, and even Cloud Block Store. This has brought you four new platforms at breakneck speeds. XL for the most demanding mission-critical workloads. Flash Blade S for high-performance workloads like AI and HPC. Flash Blade E, which radically changes the market for disk-based arrays, and now XR4 and CR4. But wait, we have one more announcement. You may have heard it from an earlier speaker on the stage. Flashblade E lets you replace aging disk at the revolutionary price point of less than 20 cents a gigabyte. I am excited to announce the newest addition to our E family, the Flash Array E. Thank you. I'm so excited by this. Complementing Flashblade E, which starts at four petabytes, Flashblade E lowers the barrier of entry to one single petabyte of data. Where Flashblade E supports file and object, Flash Array E will support unified file and block. This new E family will forever change the landscape for disk. So, let's return to the earlier graph. We need to realize we are only at the beginning. Let's take a second to imagine the compound benefits of getting on the right curve. As we zoom out, you are the pioneers of the next 10 years. You are investing to capture the gains under this new curve, driven by simplicity, evergreen, and the cloud operating model. I am so grateful to live at this time to be able to see this with you. This is the most exciting time in history to be alive. Please buckle up. We haven't seen anything yet. And like Matt said, if you, don't, you didn't know this already, disk is done and you don't need it anymore. Sir Brailsford, you would be proud. Thank you very much. Let me pause for a second. Let me pause for a second because hearing from a customer who's been on this journey themselves will tell it best. At NTT, we push the boundaries of what is possible. We're trusted globally to connect data, things, and people in ways that transform and improve business, society, 
and the planet. Every day we work together to create new connections, new insight and new value, delivering IT services and solutions across a breadth of world-class technologies. In collaboration with leading partners, helping our clients across healthcare, education, smart cities, manufacturing, retail and more. To accelerate positive change. We're renowned for some major inventions, like emojis used by billions globally to express themselves without using words, and launching the first enterprise multi-country private 5G solution. We're one of the world's leading network providers, and we're the technology partner that powers the Tour de France, revolutionizing the viewing experience for the world's most watched sporting event. It's our belief in possibility that drives us, but it's our people that make it happen. Welcome. Scott, great to have you here with us. Yeah, thanks, Sean. Welcome, Scott McIsaac, SVP of Global Operations and Managed Cloud Services at NTT Limited. Let me just introduce maybe Scott and NTT for a few minutes. NTT is a global brand. It's number 29 on the Global 500, a very highly respected data services organization. And we are so excited to have you here with us today. Scott, please share a little bit about your role and maybe your team charter. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm responsible for our managed cloud business. Um, we have, are part of what we call cloud services division with NTT. Our mission is to really become all things cloud for our clients. Um, you know, we lead with advisory services and financial operations. We can do modernization where we take clients on a journey to help make their applications cloud native and redevelop things. And then ultimately our goal is to manage and secure the environment um, long term. Um, so if you look at, you know, kind of what we've built, we're helping our customers navigate the cloud paradigm. Um, and I call it a paradigm because it's, it's not a destination, it's not a technology. The cloud is, is something that's redefining businesses today and how they leverage uh, technology. Um, our cloud, our private cloud, is backed by pure storage. It's about 60 to 70% of our current business is private cloud. Um, and we've been a customer of pure storage since 2014. Wonderful. Well, we really consider you a thought leader. You've been with us since almost the very beginning. Tell us a little bit about your pure journey and how you got started with us. Yeah, so um, I come from a company called Secure24 that NTT acquired back in uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, and in 2014 time, we were having a lot of problems with our storage platform. It was very complex. It was, we needed a lot of engineering talent to be able to accommodate how to architect and how to solution. Uh, and we we're coming on the, uh, on the backs of a lot of failures. Um, I remember Matt Burr showing up in my office and saying, hey, why don't you guys check out this new technology? And my immediate thought was, oh, great, here we go. Another storage vendor, another startup in the flash space. He's like, no, just put it in your environment, try it for a little bit, I guarantee you're gonna like it. So we rolled it out, um, and there's a few people in the audience here that were part of this, and I remember we were like, hey, let's, let's load test this thing. Let's see if it's actually going to perform like they're saying. And we loaded it up to the point where it was, it was almost hitting failure. And we got a call from the, the, the support team. And they said, hey, we just noticed that you have a huge spike in I.O. We're making sure everything's OK. Right? You know, want to make sure that things are working as expected. And we were like, how did they, how did they call this before we knew there was a problem even? Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that was kind of our entry point. We're like, hey, this is great. Um, so we decided to continue rolling that out. Um, we were able to deploy it for all of our clients. So we removed all of our spinning disk from a performance tier back then uh, and did it at no cost to our clients. So they immediately went from, you know, spinning disk, poor performance to high uh, performance with no cost. And I remember a conversation with a customer back then and they were like, hey, we have this report that take three to four hours to run. They ran in 10 minutes last night. What did you do? You broke something in our environment. We're like, no, we, we told you we're moving you to this new platform. And they immediately were able to take advantage of it. So, you know, as, as things progress, this is now our, our primary tier of storage for um, our private cloud today. And uh, as Burr said, I have the, uh, I have the shirt <laughs> on as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> no disc. That's great. Explain how Pure fits with NTT. I'm very interested. Yeah, so I said it's, it's Flash Array X is our primary uh, platform. Um, so it's, it's for a multi-purpose workload. We, put, we don't really think about how we architect. We just put our customer data on this. Um, it's very, very simplistic. It allows our engineers to, to really focus on better things, helping customers solve business challenges. But Flash Array X is the primary. 
Uh, Flash Array C uh, is something that we help push Pure on. Um, I always said back in 2015, I'm like, guys, paint the data center orange. Let's, let's get this thing out there. Let's become, become an all Flash data center. And at the time, obviously, it was too expensive to do that. But Flash Array C came along, and we were able to use this for our primary backup start, uh, target. We're replacing about 17 petabytes of Oracle ZFS um, with this at a, at a much lower cost and a better performing experience. We use FlashBlade for our Elastic Data, um, data Lake. Um, so it's, it's a pretty sizable footprint. We're processing you know, billions of logs a day through this um, using FlashBlade. And then we've just started moving down the Evergreen One path uh, and you know, trying to look at how do we use more subscription to be able to deploy capacity where we need it on demand. Wow, that's amazing. You know, I talked a little bit about pioneers, and you're a pioneer in your industry. Let's talk a little bit about innovation. Where have the innovations that have, in the data storage space that you've most benefited from? Maybe just talk a little bit about your approach to innovation. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say you know, the Flash Array C is something that we pushed very hard for. Um, we didn't need high performance. We knew fast enough is fast enough for general purpose workloads. We don't need sub millisecond for everything. So we, when we, I remember sitting in an advisory board and I was pushing this message of, hey, give us something cheap. Right? We just want a cheap solution, it's high capacity, we don't care about the performance, um, and help us and really drive that. So that's, that's something that's really helped us. We're able to, again, simplify our environment with, multi with removing multiple vendors now and things like that. Um, and then the other thing is we, we've been asking for it for a long time, and we finally just achieved this was NFS on top flash array. Mm. Um, and that's been, a, that's been a game changer in our backup space. So. Thanks, for, thanks for pushing us. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> So if you were sitting in that listening? elevator with that gentleman from that university and you had to talk about like why pure, what would you tell him? Simplistically. I mean, this was our, we had so much complexity in our environment and how we, how we had to solution and architect. Um, this was the number one thing that we wanted to push for is we wanted a simple solution that we could have all of our engineers manage. I didn't want to have storage engineers. I wanted to have cloud engineers that could focus on, again, business outcomes for our customers. Um, and it had to be a very simplistic approach. So that's the first thing. The other one would be the support. Um, that experience that we had when, when support called us, we were like, ah, okay, this is just because it's, we're a new customer. But that has uh, been the same throughout this entire experience with Pure. It's mm -hmm. always been a very high performance support organization, knows about problems before we do, um, and it can help fix our environments. Uh, the, other, the other place for us was um, we struggle with data center capacity like everyone else and power capacity. You know, we were able to take you know, six, seven, eight cabinets down to a couple U, right? And that's big for us because we can get higher density, we can get more things in there, which is why we're really excited about the future of the R4s because, again, fast enough is fast enough for us. We can get more density in that environment and we can, in, and again, simplify our environment and reduce our costs. All right, so you feel like you're Sir David Brailsford of NTT. You've, had, you've been with us for nine years now, I think. How many disruptive upgrades or non-disruptive upgrades have you had during that period of time? Yeah, we've, this, was, this has become table stakes for us. Like these non-disruptive upgrades are something we do on a regular. Um, I think we've had non, 85 of them, roughly. Wow. Um, and of the 85, most of them are going to be controller upgrades and life cycling out legacy and, and end of life hardware into the new version. But again, we, we look at this as just, it's table stakes now. We expect this from Pure, and it, it's, <laughs> been, it's been a very, very um, good process. Uh, you know, we, I remember we used to have to plan weekends and, and hours and hundreds of hours of getting ready to upgrade Array, and now we, you know, we call support, we work with you guys, press a button, and it gets upgraded with no impact. Wow, interesting. I met an analyst just yesterday who said, I've heard about this non-disruption thing. Is it real? Does it really work? <laughs> 85, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's real. So talk about like, what this does for data protection in your environment. Yeah, from, uh, security is always at the heart of everything we do. As I mentioned, you know, we, we try to underpin all of our services with true integrated security offerings. And you, know, you hear the, the buzzword of secure by design and those things, but we, we really live that. Our engineers live it, our, our, our teams live it together. Um, but we, we've had a lot of uh, experience in migrating customers, and the one that sticks out the most is we were, we were mid-migration of about 2,000 systems onto our private cloud. Um, and the customer got hit with ransomware before we were managing the environment. We were managing a small portion of it. Mm. Uh, the systems, we had about 1,000 systems moved over and 1,000 systems that weren't. Of that, we were able to recover those 1,000 systems that got hit within 30 minutes to an hour. The rest of the 1,000 systems took weeks. Wow. So wow. It's, it's very, very important to us. Wow. So as we paint the, the area under the curve for the next 10 years, what's next? 
uh, you know, higher density, you know, Flashblade E is something we're looking at. Uh, we have a pretty sizable S3 object store that we support today for our clients, and we're looking at how do we leverage Flashblade E for that. Um, and now with obviously the new introduction of uh, uh, Flash Array E, that's going to be something that's very, again, higher density workloads, paint the data center orange type environment. So. Wow, that's amazing. Well, I just wanted to express our deep gratitude for the journey that we've been on together. Um, I think you've taught us a lot. I have one thing for you, if that would be OK. Sure. I have, uh, uh, we, we were trying to think, what kind of award could we give you for a lifetime of achievement and really pushing us on all these fronts? And so we had something special made for you. That would oh, be OK. Um, this, is our, <laughs> this is our special XCR4 um, gold-plated award that was just made for him. And uh, I'm looking forward to your next album. You can uh. wear this on the cover. <laughs> so I'd like to yeah. maybe anoint you with this, if that would be OK. Yeah, yeah. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah. And if uh, anybody wants to touch this, if you want to touch and feel how heavy this really is, please see him in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. I just w really wanted wow. to say thank you so much. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. As you've heard from Scott, NTT reaped the benefits of continuous innovation, a true a pioneer in a space. As a result, they got better over time. It's why we want to partner with you, with Pure. As we continuously innovate and make things better, you get better. So we have one more thing for you. It's our next Breakthrough Award winner for this year's greatest of all time APJ Award. Take a look. Buckle up. From the family-friendly Qashqai SUV to the all-electric LEAF Compact, Nissan Australia's manufacturing plant sets the pace for producing high-quality vehicle components. This track record depends on an IT infrastructure that runs at full speed all the time. Putting the brakes on critical manufacturing processes just isn't an option in the competitive automotive industry. From Flash Array to Flashblade, Active Cluster to Evergreen, Nissan Australia keeps its plant running with pure storage, driving superior performance, scalability, and space savings with nimble operations and a stable, reliable storage environment, helping the lean IT team move full throttle ahead to support innovation. With zero downtime, Nissan Australia can race ahead with new offerings to meet customers' unique needs. For keeping its plant running at peak performance, we congratulate Nissan Australia on winning this year's APJ Greatest of All Time Award. Congratulations, Nissan. We congratulate you and say, Honto ni arigato gozaimasu. This morning at 11 a.m., we have a session which features an exciting new announcement for Flash Array, and then please attend at 11 a.m. for the next day for the Flash Array E overview session. So uh, we made it. It's just the beginning of your journey. Uh, you heard from Charlie. You heard from Sean. Uh, you're going to hear it many times throughout this event. If you take away anything, what they said the last two days, Pure Stores has removed any and all barriers to fully moving to all flash. You've made the right choices, but maybe you're only using all flash in portions of your environment. You can have your cake and eat it too, I promise you all flash goodness at the price of disk economics for every part of your data center. All right, so we'll be back here tomorrow. Uh, we've got a few pure storage OGs, uh, some true thought leaders that are ready to drop some knowledge and send you off in a really inspiring note. So uh, you're gonna hear from uh, Kaz and you'll hear from Amy Fowler, uh, who will walk you through the disk to flash evolution. Uh, you'll hear from my man Ajay, who's the chief product officer, my old boss, Pure, who will at, at here, who will uh, speak to the innovation uh, that we're that we're that we're driving. Uh, you'll hear from Rob, our CTO. Uh, so that's two di two big topics on the mind: so sustainability and AI. Charlie's already said that anybody younger than him is going to die, but whatever. Uh, so we've covered a lot of ground, and you might be asking yourself, you know, besides all the awesomeness uh, of the announcements, and you know, what's kind of new at this year's Accelerate? All right. So here's a little bit of a shout out to Charlie. I, su I just saw a bunch of heads go up. I must have done something right. We gave out water bottles one year. Everybody in the company, everybody had a water bottle. And guess what? Everybody left that water bottle laying around. Nobody wanted that water bottle because everybody's got a million water bottles. Who wants to bring another water bottle home? Charles said, we can't do that. We can't create this kind of waste. 
We're putting our money where our mouth is, and we're walking the walk, and we're walking the talk, excuse me, on, on, on what we do. So you're not going to see a lot of paper at this event. You're not going to see a lot of swag, right? We're trying to reduce all that in an effort to say, hey, this is very much what we see as a parallel to waste in a data center. All right, so uh, in closing, a big thank you to our sponsors. Um, you know, please do not forget to, uh, to go see them uh, you know, in the zone. Uh, there's a great, there's a great uh, setup in there, um, and our partners and our sponsors have, have just been wonderful to work with uh, and help us pulling off this event. So uh, enjoy your day today, please. Uh, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, you guys are all awesome, and we will see you tomorrow.